Are you feeling tired? You're getting muscle cramps. Your heart is pounding like a drum. You have brain fog and you feel weak. If that's you, then you're probably suffering from electrolyte deficiencies. This may happen especially if you're doing fasting or a low-carb keto diet. It doesn't matter what diet you're on, you still need to get your electrolytes. So, my name is Sim, and in this video I'm gonna give you a full guide on getting enough electrolytes on the ketogenic diet. After you switch over from a high-carb diet to a ketogenic diet, your body tends to lose a lot of water weight. If you're eating more carbohydrates, then the higher levels of insulin and blood sugar, they're gonna make your kidneys retain water, and lower levels of insulin cause the kidneys to secrete more water. And in so doing, you're flushing out a lot of the electrolytes. This is also one of the biggest reasons why people experience rapid weight loss after they switch over to a low-carb diet. It's not all fat, most of it is simply water and glycogen. And the biggest danger to this is that with frequent urination and sweating, you're gonna also lose your electrolytes and that's gonna cause the keto flu. <laughs> Fortunately, this can all be fixed and prevented. So let's start off with getting enough sodium. Sodium helps to balance bodily fluids, regulates blood pressure, contracts muscles and direct nerve signaling. RDA for sodium is 1500 to 2300 milligrams, which is about one teaspoon or six grams of salt a day. Now, these recommendations are quite low because usually they're based on a highly processed high carb diet like the standard American diet that is already going to cause obesity, diabetes and hypertension. However, if you're eating a whole foods diet that doesn't include a lot of processed foods like vegan, paleo or keto, then that's a whole nother story. You need more sodium. In that case, you can safely consume up to 4000 to 7000 milligrams of sodium which is up to three teaspoons of salt. However, your individual sodium requirements, they depend on your activity levels. If you're sweating a lot because of exercising, taking a sauna or living in warmer climates, then you definitely should aim for the higher ends of that spectrum. If you're sedentary and don't work out a lot, then you don't need to force feed yourself more sodium either. Signs of not getting enough sodium are muscle cramps, brain fog and overall tiredness. To get enough sodium on keto, you can simply use more salt on your foods. Season the meat with large chunks of sea salt. It's gonna make it more delicious and satiating. Salt Bay, he would approve it. Yeah. Even if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you should still sprinkle some salt on vegetables, plant foods and eggs because you need that salt. Salt and pepper are also great for seasoning salads and oil dressings. You can consume some salty snacks like pickles, pork rinds, salted nuts and things like that. Cooking your own bone broth with bouillon cubes and sea salt is another way of getting your enough sodium. I recommend using pink Himalayan rock salt because it has additional minerals like magnesium. Good quality sea salt can also be very good, but you would want to avoid regular white table salt because it has other unhealthy compounds. Rule of thumb, get a minimum of 2000 milligrams of sodium a day, which is one to two teaspoons of salt. If you're physically active or sweat a lot, then you should aim for 4000 to 7000 milligrams, which is two to three teaspoons of salt. To absorb the sodium better, you can mix it with water. Let's now talk about potassium. Potassium is an essential electrolyte that regulates heartbeat. Heart palpitations and swelling are usually caused by a potassium deficiency. Hunter-gatherer tribes are said to have been getting up to 10,000 milligrams of potassium a day from different plant foods and seeds. The RDA for potassium is 4,700 milligrams, but up to 98% of Americans don't get nearly as much. However, your body's potassium stores are controlled by sodium intake via the sodium potassium pump. During active transport of ATP, the sodium potassium pump pumps out three ions of sodium and pumps in two ions of potassium. Three going out and two going in. If you're losing more sodium from the outside of the cell, then you'll also lose potassium from the inside because of offsetting the membrane potential of the cell. Long story short, 
not getting enough sodium will also make you potassium deficient. Like we said, the RDA for potassium is about 4,700 milligrams. Bananas are the most popular sources of potassium with about 420 milligrams per average banana. However, there are other, much better keto-friendly alternatives. Avocados have 1,000 milligrams of potassium per average avocado. Yogurt has 579 milligrams per one cup. Broccoli has 457 milligrams per one cup. Winter squash, 857 milligrams per one cup. Potatoes, 610 to 694 milligrams per one medium potato. Mushrooms, 100 to 200 milligrams per cup. 440 milligrams per one 300 gram cucumber. Coconut water, 600 milligrams of potassium per one cup. There are also some specific potassium salts like potassium chloride and potassium citrate. You can also take the new salt brand, which has over 3000 milligrams of potassium per teaspoon. Rule of thumb, make sure you get your daily sodium intake before worrying about potassium that much. At minimum, get 2000 milligrams of potassium, but don't go above 4700 milligrams either. Salt. Moving on with magnesium. When it comes to magnesium, then almost all of the people are deficient of it. It's estimated that over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium. The RDA for magnesium is 400 to 450 milligrams. Foods high in magnesium are spinach, almonds, avocados, fish, raw cacao, dark chocolate, salmon, leafy greens and nuts. One ounce of almonds has 75 milligrams of magnesium. One tablespoon of cacao powder and dark chocolate has 80 milligrams. One piece of artichokes has 75 milligrams of magnesium. One average fillet of salmon has 60 milligrams. One cup of spinach has 75 milligrams. Pink Himalayan rock salt has some magnesium, but in very small amounts. The most absorbable magnesium supplements are said to be magnesium citrate, lactate and chloride, not magnesium oxide and magnesium sulfate. However, taking magnesium supplements overall haven't been shown to be very effective in terms of how much magnesium you're actually absorbing. In fact, absorbing magnesium through the intestinal tract is much lower than absorption through the skin. That's why taking an Epsom salt bath with magnesium flakes will make you absorb a lot more magnesium than a supplement. Watch this. <laughs> the most important electrolytes are sodium, potassium and magnesium. But there are also some others that aren't that important, but it's still a good idea to pay attention to them. So let's go through the secondary electrolytes. RDA for calcium is 1000 to 300 milligrams for adults. It's required for muscles and bones. Consuming more dairy and calcium isn't healthier and won't strengthen your bones. Regions with highest dairy consumption also have the highest rates of bone fractures and osteoporosis. If you're eating at least some animal products and you're not experiencing fragile bones, then you shouldn't supplement calcium because it can cause calcification of the arteries. Studies done on rats, however, have shown that fasting actually initiates healing of cartilage in bones with a rise in phosphorus and recalcification. The problem with osteoporosis isn't getting enough calcium. You actually need the other fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D and vitamin K2 to use that calcium and direct it into the right spot. So you can drink as much milk as you want to but you won't still promote your bone strength if you're not getting the other fat-soluble vitamins. <music> Moving on with chloride. RDA for chloride is about 2000 to 2300 milligrams and it's needed for digestion and fluid balances. Chloride is found in almost all foods like preserved meat, canned foods, sea vegetables, olives, rye, cheese, yeast, etc especially if they're salted. Therefore, chloride deficiencies rarely happen. RDA for phosphorus is around 700 to 1000 milligrams a day. Children need up to 1200 milligrams because it supports the growth of bones and teeth. Animal products with protein like meat, dairy, fish and also nuts have plenty of phosphorus, so it's not an issue in most cases. Low levels of phosphorus usually occur in conjunction with large amounts of alcohol consumption and when taking certain medications. If you're eating enough animal products, some vegetables, some nuts, some seeds, then you're already gonna get most of the electrolytes and minerals that your body needs. In reality, you would only want to pay attention to the most common deficiencies like sodium, potassium and magnesium. But as the saying goes, 
An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, which is why you want to make sure you won't lose your electrolytes in the first place. Your body actually stores a ton of the minerals in its bones and fat tissue. The problem is that your body doesn't know how to utilize and mobilize those minerals. In fact, like we saw in the study with the rats, abstaining from the micronutrient intake for a short period of time actually promotes the efficiency of absorbing them from food. Abstaining from these micronutrients for a short period of time actually helps to mobilize the micronutrients that are inside your body. It also promotes the absorption of the nutrients from your food after you start eating because of this phenomenon called hormesis. The key is to not excrete your electrolytes and lose them. Drinking too much water makes you urinate more frequently and you will thus excrete more electrolytes. Unless you're dehydrated, you don't want to be guzzling down unnecessary water. Pay attention to the color of your urine. If it's dark brown or yellow, then you will want to get some water, but if it's clister clear see-through, then you definitely don't need to be drinking any more water and you should dial back. Sparking water can also make you dehydrated and it can lower bone density because of the mild acidity induced by carbonation. Coffee and other teas may cause dehydration and a loss of electrolytes. They also inhibit the absorption of certain micronutrients, which is why you don't want to be combining them with food or take supplements around their time of consumption. To prevent unwanted loss of minerals, don't consume any more than 2 to 4 cups of coffee or tea a day. Milk was a bad choice. Now, I'm gonna give you some electrolyte hacks. Some additional things you can consume to help to mobilize the micronutrients and minerals in your body. Baking soda. It's 100% sodium bicarbonate and one teaspoon of baking soda has 30 hundred milligrams of sodium. Baking soda is great for balancing the body's pH levels fixing digestive issues and healing the kidneys. Apple cider vinegar. It's a fermented type of alcohol that has many health benefits like reduced inflammation, improved insulin sensitivity and digestion. Apple cider vinegar has zero calories but has trace amounts of potassium and other minerals so it's great to consume while fasting. You don't want to be consuming any more than one teaspoon of baking soda a day because of the high sodium content and getting too much apple cider vinegar can also cause an upset stomach as well as mess up your teeth. In most cases, you can drink 2 to 4 teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and get most of the health benefits. I also sometimes like to take these large chunks of sea salt crystals and, you know, just chew them. It's like sodium candy and it's very delicious, especially if you're fasting. You can also take some exogenous ketones for electrolytes. Most of these keto supplements are based on beta-hydroxybutyrate salts. And in order to metabolize them more efficiently, they're bound to magnesium, calcium and potassium and sodium which is amazing. Exogenous ketones can be very good for getting your electrolytes and getting a boost in ketones as well. You can also use these different electrolyte powders, but at the same time, you have to pay very close attention to what the actual ingredients in them are. You definitely don't get away with consuming Gatorade or these other carbohydrate-based drinks. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. In conclusion, make sure you get enough sodium from your foods be generous with those salt crystals and don't piss out all of your electrolytes either. Thanks for watching this video, my name is Seem. Make sure you check out my other videos about fasting, the ketogenic diet and becoming superhuman in general. Thanks for watching, stay salty, stay empowered. Are you okay? Because you're sweating pretty profusely.